Starship SN10 takes flight, takes the pad, then takes the bow, and now you have an opportunity to ride on one yourself. Dragon's Crew 2 mission gets a date that pleases Elon, but may leave him disappointed in the end. The 20th Starlink mission lifts off, and we get some answers as to what happened to last week's ill-fated booster. Finishing with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is... <laughs> As you may be aware as by meow, Starship Serial Number 10 took off on its high altitude test flight from Boca Chica, Texas on Wednesday after a T-0 auto abort occurred just a couple hours earlier due to too much thrust produced by its three Raptor engines. But not to worry, Elon and his team just said screw it and increased the thrust limit. Problem solved, onward we go. The mission was to improve SpaceX's understanding and development of a fully reusable rocket designed to carry both crew and cargo on long-duration interplanetary flights to places like Mars. And although during these early test events, saving the vehicle isn't a necessity to mission success, it definitely provides a more positive outlook on the program when a test run outperforms the previous one. And that's exactly what happened this time. Instead of exploding on the landing pad like SN8 and SN9 did, SN10 made a quote, <laughs> soft landing that really, if we're being honest with ourselves, only looks soft in comparison to the previous ones. Third time's a charm as the saying goes. We've had a successful soft touchdown on the landing pad. That's capping a beautiful test flight of Starship 10. Leaving the vehicle to impersonate the Leaning Tower of Pizza. That's right, I said pizza. I'm hungry. Elon tweeted the good news of Starship landing in one piece and congratulated his team for doing great work. One day, the true measure of success will be that Starship flights are commonplace. But I counter argue that they already are. For example, upon closer examination using Lab Padres cams, you can see during leg deployment that a few legs didn't lock into place, causing them to swing back and forth on the way down. This, along with the soft landing, led to this lean. And to make the situation even more dramatic, SN10 was left with a fire under her skirt that no man could satisfy with a lawn sprinkler. The rocket's new low rider design, thanks to those chicken legs that were introduced to us exactly a year ago, didn't leave much room for the deluge system to reach the trapped heat, which may have led to the reignition of Starship's gases, sending her on a second flight and turning this op into a touch and go. See, I'd say these flights are now commonplace. However, and this is just my own theory, a Kevin theory as the lawyer wife calls them, after seeing Starship actually survived its ordeal, SpaceX quickly came to the harsh realization that somebody is now gonna have to go take it apart. <laughs> Who wants to do that job? So perhaps they just decide to push that red button at Mission Control instead. And I do realize that if there was really a red button, it wouldn't be called a red. It'd be called a RID, Rapid Intentional Disassembly which they do by the way they just don't call it that i don't think but they should but yeah that's what i would do and that's probably also the reason why every one of my applications for a launch director position has always been rejected but just think about it for a sec although they'll never admit to doing it which is easier taking apart a lego model piece by piece or just letting the thing disassemble itself and speaking of lego our own starship super heavy model built during the trifin days literally as SpaceX was making the switch from carbon fiber to stainless steel, yeah, that sucked, has reached 10,000 supporters on LEGO Ideas. So my brother and I want to thank each and every one of you who signed up to support it. In the coming months, it will go in front of a LEGO review board where a determination will be made as to whether or not it will become an official LEGO set. The first SpaceX LEGO set to reach this level of support was my Falcon Heavy several years back, but was ultimately rejected by the LEGO company, as well as every other SpaceX LEGO idea since. So if you really want one of these, be sure to send a strongly worded, yet polite, letter Lego's way. But anywho, back to our topic on exploding rockets. If you'd like to take a free all-inclusive trip around the moon on Starship, Dear Moon's got you, brah. The project's lead, known as YM, has paid for every seat on Starship's moonshot and is inviting anyone who considers him or herself an artist to apply for one of the eight available seats left to fill. YM released a statement via social media on Wednesday, clarifying two criteria that potential astronauts need to meet. First, whatever your activity is, going to space should help you push its envelope so you can help others in some way. Second, you have to be willing and able to support other crew members who share similar aspirations. If you qualify and are willing to risk it all for the sake of impressing your more successful wife, despite her calling you a derp for trying, then there's a link in the description where you can sign up now. 
They even give you a neat little candidate ticket with your face on it. Elon still says the mission to circumnavigate the moon is still on track for 2023. But back to Boca Chica we return. Even though SN10 is kaput, SN11 is on deck and could be moved down the road to Suicide Beach in a matter of days. And as the test cadence increases, so will the altitude. At one time, Elon said they would test fly a starship across the Kármán line and into space, only to cook the engines on the way down to speed up the rate of descent, creating more friction with the atmosphere to test out those heat shields. Whether or not that's still the plan, SpaceX is aiming to go orbital this year. And to do that, they'll need to attach Starship to its super heavy booster, the first of which is currently close to being fully stacked. And the construction of the orbital launch platform from which it will lift off is gaining momentum as well. SpaceX will also be looking to test in-orbit refueling in the near future, something they need to do to satisfy a government contract with NASA for Artemis. In other South Texas news, Elon says he is creating the city of Starbase, Texas, an area much larger than Boca Chica. And the lawyer wife thinks the motivation behind this municipal charter may be so SpaceX can basically set their own ordinances and govern themselves. But I personally think that Elon just wants to be mayor slash overlord. Let his political journey to total world domination begin. Hereby demand the complete and total supplication of this governing body to my command. And I think some of his employees at SpaceX may have jumped the gun a bit on this evil plan. During Lab Padre's live stream this week, workers were spotted taking down Lab's launch pad cam and removing it from the property he leases through a third party. This caused panic and even more confusion than what was already going on behind the scenes down there, with SpaceX looking to drill for gas on certain properties. But was quickly sorted out when Elon got wind of it via Lab's loyal fans on Twitter, and within minutes everything was made right, and even seems to be working out better than the previous arrangement. Isn't Elon the best? Dude wants something done, and it gets done no questions asked. Whether you're running your state into the ground, or you're an overpriced stock, you listen to what Elon has to say. But of course, now that the Elon is willing to do lab a solid, everybody else wants in on this deal to set up a camera on SpaceX's property. To which he responded, I'm all for exciting video coverage, but we also can't have the place festooned with cameras. It is great how we have so many people keeping an eye on SpaceX operations for us space turds, but let's not back Elon into a tight spot here by taking advantage of his generosity. And also, festooned is a fun word to say. Admit it, you just tried it, but you really gotta drag out those O's. Festooned. What a mellifluous word. Let's make that our word of the day. Moving on to other news meow. Crew 2, the third manned SpaceX mission to the ISS, now has a launch date of April 20th. However, NASA's commercial crew program manager, Steve, says that they will probably adjust that a little bit, which did not please the Elon. After no less than a couple handful of delays, Starlink 17, now the 20th Starlink mission, finally launched from Cape Canaveral carrying 60 satellites. This occurred early Thursday morning, and it was this booster's record-tying eighth flight, which nailed its landing on the birdless drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, stationed on the Atlantic Ocean. This followed a different Starlink mission where a booster missed the target, but now we have answers as to why that happened. SpaceX's own Benji clarified the problem said booster encountered during ascent, which ultimately contributed to its demise. The anomaly that we saw on this one particularly, um, it, was a, it was a higher count vehicle, um, and some of the components were actually the highest count. They were life leaders. Um, basically, there are covers, we call them boots, over certain parts of the, the engine. In this case, one of these boots, this was the, the, the highest count uh, number of flights that this particular boot um, design had seen. This particular boot had a, had a little bit of a hole, basically, developed a hole. There's hot gases, of course. I mean, that's what makes the rocket go up. Very hot gases coming out of the engine. But you want those hot gases to be where they're supposed to be and not go where they're not supposed to be. So that boot, a little bit of a hole developed, a little bit of hot gas got to where it's not supposed to be, and it caused that engine to shut down. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. Rocket Lab is going public in the coming months via a SPAC, or SPAC merger, with vector acquisitions that will net them a 4.1 billion enterprise value with hundreds of millions in proceeds expected. With that fresh investment cash, Rocket Lab will be building their next rocket, revealed this week, called Neutron. Now I'm not saying they are, because they're not, but if Electron is equivalent to Falcon 1, then Neutron is equivalent to Falcon 9. In that, you know, it's a medium-sized lift vehicle that will have a reusable first stage capable of propulsively landing itself on an ocean platform. And they are also making it crew rated, launching out of Wallops Island, Virginia. Elon noted the vehicle's familiarity, tweeting that it is nonetheless the right move for the company to make. 
I interviewed their CEO, Peter Beck, last year, right after SpaceX announced they were entering the dedicated rideshare market. Co you know, competition is always a good thing. And now the tables have turned, and it is Rocket Lab that is bringing the competition to SpaceX, targeting satellite constellation customers that will be competing with Starlink. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, and I want to thank my eccentric members and patrons for their support of the channel. If you're interested in doing the same and receiving more SpaceX content in your week, check out the links in the description below. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.